Turn her around. Turn her, turn her, turn her, turn her. This is momentum. Okay, so we're back talking about momentum. Um, and this video is uh, forever for Turner. Um, so he goes down in history having a video for him. Um, congratulations. Um, previously, when we've talked about conservation of momentum, uh, we spent a lot of time in the past videos doing like M1, V1I plus M2, V2I plus yada, 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 the big long equation, right? And before that, some of the things we did was we said, look, if uh, we had an impulse, which, you know, we said an impulse was a force multiplied by a time. Um, we said that if we have something like a hockey puck moving this way, and then we hit that hockey puck, you know, with a stick this way, the net result from start to finish would be the hockey puck going down. And we did this with a initial momentum plus an impulse equaled some final momentum here. What we're going to do today is we are going to take this big equation and we're going to use it again, but we're going to use it in the two dimensions that we did prior problems in. So if you are watching these videos in future years um, and you haven't seen those videos, you have no idea what I'm talking about with the big momentum equation, and you have no idea what I'm talking about with 2D uh, momentum impulse, then go and watch those videos and then come on back. But for us right now, in the moment, we have seen those videos. So let's take a look at um, an example of what we're talking about here on how we can do this. So what we have is, uh, in this problem, we have a car with some mass of 950 kilograms uh, in a, at some speed, 60 meters per second, and it's approaching an intersection traveling east. So what we have, you know, here's my uh, poorly drawn car. You know, I guess we're drawing a top-down view. And it has a mass, we'll call it MC, MC car, of 950 kilograms. And it has some velocity, so we'll call this the initial velocity of the car, so VIC, of 16 meters per second, okay? Now, it's approaching an intersection, and going into this intersection as well is a minivan. Now, hot take. Um, one, that's not how you drive a minivan, but whatever, it's close enough. I think minivans might be the best vehicle ever in existence. Um, you can do everything in a minivan. Uh, you can take out the seats in the back and then put in a bunch of like drywall and lumber. So you can do like home projects with it. Um, you can take them to the drive-in and they've got tons of seating for everybody. And you can like lay down on them with blankets. Uh, you can stuff all your friends into the minivan and drive them around places. Um, uh, you know, you, you could do everything with the minivan. They're great. You can go to soccer practice, whatever. But this minivan, uh, it's moving north in this case. Um, the mass of the minivan, we'll call that a MM mass mini, um, is 1,300 kilograms. And it has some initial velocity, vim, of uh, 21 meters per second. Okay? And in the States, a lot of our intersections are like 90 degrees. Um, you know, you can like go straight or left or right. And because of that, there's a lot of accidents that actually do happen. Uh, a slightly better way to design intersections is with roundabouts. But um, I'm going to be very honest. I have seen some real bright people driving uh, where they go in the wrong way in a roundabout. And luckily, nobody else was in that circle because they would have been head-on collision and someone would have died. Um, so we don't exactly understand roundabouts very well here in the States. But uh, <laughs> until we do, we're stuck with just 90-degree turns. And the issue is that if someone misses a stoplight or a stop sign, then all of a sudden you get a, you get a crash in the middle. Um, and if we kind of take a look at this, if these two cars do crash in the middle and they stick together, we have a pretty good intuition that this pileup of the cars is going to travel both up and to the right. It's going to travel somewhere up and to the right in this upward direction here. Okay, This is what we think should happen. We can actually prove that this is what's going to happen with the idea of momentum and conserving it. So normally, like I said, we would use that long equation. We would say M1 uh, VIC, so that's the car, so mass car VIC of the car, plus mass of the minivan times the initial speed of the minivan equals the mass of the car times the final speed of the car plus the mass of the minivan times the final speed of the minivan. And in a way, we are using this equation, but not exactly, okay? Not exactly. You see, this equation, when we've used it previously, we've just like gotten a bunch of numbers for everything. 
and we just added the numbers together and solved. And we could do that because this equation, as we had it previously, was just going left and right, or it was just going up and down. It was one dimensional. Now we have cars going left and right and up and down, which means I can't just take numbers and add them together. I have to graphically add these vectors together using a head tail method, and then I can start analyzing the problem to see what's going on. So we're still technically using this equation, but um, we're, we need to draw ourselves a little bit better of a picture, just like we did up here. This picture is so important um, to show us what it is we're going to be adding and how we're going to be adding that. So if we kind of imagine what we have here, you know, let's, let's make a starting point. Let's just like start here. We have two momentums initially. We have the momentum of the minivan going up, right? This is the initial momentum of the minivan. And we know it's some mass of the minivan multiplied by that initial minivan velocity, which we know as being 1300 kilograms for the mass and 21 for the velocity. So we know that this momentum traveling upwards has some quantity. And 1300 times 21 is 27,300 newton seconds. So that's our first momentum here, okay? That's the momentum of the minivan. Now we have to add that momentum to the initial momentum of the car. Well, when we add things that are vectors, we need to add them with the head tail method. This is that classic question, what's three plus four? And then everybody says seven, and then we say, nope, it's five. We've been doing that a lot. If we add the car's momentum, it starts up here because we're adding it head tail. So this is the head of the red vector um, that goes to the tail of the blue vector. And this is the initial momentum of the car, which we, once again, it is a mass multiplied by a velocity. And if we plug in values here, the mass of the car was 950, its velocity was 16. So if we put that together, 950 times 16, we get 15,200 newton seconds for the momentum. Now, if we want to figure out what this equals, so we've added them together, and what do they equal? Well, that equals a resultant vector. It equals a vector that goes from the start to the finish. So it, from the start of the first vector we drew to the end of the last vector we drew, and if we draw that, this purple line here is the resultant vector. And this purple line actually represents everything over here, okay? Even though it's one line, it could represent multiple things. And in this case, that's very nice because our vehicles have actually stuck together. So this is just whatever the final momentum is of this system. If we wanna find this final momentum first, in order to allow us to eventually get the speed that the cars are moving after the collision and the direction, we do need this final momentum. And the easiest way to do that is to recognize that this is a nice right triangle. The van's moving up and down, the car's moving left and right. And with the right triangle, we can say that the red vector is side A, the blue vector is side B, and our final momentum is side C. And this allows us to use the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So if we go ahead and actually plug in values here, these numbers are going to get big, but that's fine because, you know, we got calculators. So we can say 27,300 squared, woof, that's big, plus 15,200 squared, geez, equals our C vector, which is the final momentum, and then that would normally be squared, and to get rid of that square, we take the square root, and that will give us our final momentum vector. So our final momentum vector, uh, the quantity of it, is whatever that comes out to be. So 27,300 squared plus 15,200 squared. That is like 9.7 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Then we take the square root of that, and we get a value of 31,246. There's a decimal there, but let's just ignore that for a second. And this is in Newton seconds because it is a momentum. Okay? So that gives us our hypotenuse. 
Now, this question here, it's not actually f asking us for that final momentum. It's asking us for the final speed and the final direction. And momentum isn't speed. Momentum is momentum. But we can find momentum given, or we can find speed given the momentum. We know momentum equals a mass multiplied by some velocity. And this would be like the final velocity of our collision. You know, the cars have crashed and now they're moving. And the other important thing to recognize here is that this mass in the equation, that's not just the car and it's not just the minivan. Because these objects have stuck together, they're now one object. We saw this with the Mako shark problem and we saw this with the snowball problem we did uh, for one dimension. So we know that we can rewrite this equation down here to solve for VF as the 31,246 equals the total mass here. So that's the car, 950, plus the van of 1300 multiplied by what their final velocity is together. Uh, 950 plus 1300 is 2250. So I'm just going to divide by 2250 and that'll wipe all that out. And if I divide by 2250 on the other side, it'll have our final velocity. So for us, our final velocity is whatever this number is. Uh, so divide by 2250. And we get something around 13.89 meters per second. So that's our final velocity right there. We were able to find momentum using our triangle. It's very important. You have to do this uh, triangle for two dimensions. And then look, we use a Pythagorean theorem. Uh, we said P equals MV. We knew the masses. We found a velocity. So nothing too crazy there. Now, one of the other things that this problem is asking us for is the direction that these objects are going. Now, we know they're going to go up and to the right, but at what specific angle are they going to go? Well, one way to do this is to set up a coordinate system. So on the start of where we drew all of our vectors, this black dot right here, I'm gonna just set up a coordinate axis. And the reason why I'm doing that is because with this axis, I can pretty easily see that the angle that I wanna solve is this blue one from the positive x-axis to our final momentum vector. That, if you recall, is the polar angle. We talked about that in unit four. Now, I know that's going to be something between 0 and 90 degrees because that's quadrant 1, but I'm not exactly sure what it is. What I can do is I can find this green angle here. I can recognize that on my triangle, this car is the opposite side of the triangle, and the van is actually the adjacent side of the triangle. And that means if I want to find the angle on the inside here, I can say that that angle is equal to the inverse tangent. I'm using an inverse function, uh, an inverse trig function to find an angle. And I'm using a tangent because it's an opposite and an adjacent. So I can say inverse tangent of 15,200 divided by 27,300. And I can find this green angle phi, which will be inverse tangent of 15,200 divided by 27,300. Make sure you're in degrees before you do that if you want your answer in degrees. And we find this angle here is 29.1 degrees. Well, since I know that between going up and going sideways is 90 degrees, I can easily find this angle theta just by saying 90 minus that green angle, the 29.1. And we quickly get here that our blue angle or our polar angle, which we're actually looking for in this problem, is just 60.9 degrees. So that's the direction uh, that we would want in this problem if we were looking for it. Most of the time, we're not going to concern ourselves overly with the direction in this class. Um, it's something that you know we could do if we wanted to often, but uh, you know it's not a huge deal. We know this object's going to go up and to the right. We don't have to overly worry about it right now. But if we wanted to, we could. I um, mean, with that, this problem is finished. Um, uh, Check out the practice problem next where we look at a wide receiver being tackled by a defensive back, um, very similar to what we just did here. And then in our next uh, lecture videos, we're going to actually take a look at slightly more difficult two-dimensional problems. We're going to look at problems where instead of things moving at just 
90 degrees to each other. Um, what happens if objects kind of hit and ricochet in kind of some weird angles and weird directions? Uh, but for right now, this problem is finished. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, until next time, adios and take it easy.